you'll actually start saving data. Specifically, the representation of data that you'll use with the Foundation Framework. Foundation's data structure wraps up a buffer of bytes, that is, a region of memory, in a way that makes it easy for us to read and write those bytes. In modern computer architecture, the smallest unit of data you can address is a byte, which comprises 8 bits. Accordingly, in Swift, a byte is represented using the uint8 structure, whose name is short for 8-bit unsigned integer. Talking about data can get a little confusing because not only are those bytes themselves considered to be data in general computer science, but in Swift, we use the foundation type with the name data to provide a light abstraction around the underlying bytes. Let's see what I mean by that. Now that we're learning about the relationship between data and bytes, I've created an array of mysterious bytes. Shortly, we'll be saving them to your mystery data URL. If you look in the sidebar, you'll see that I've used three different types of literals to represent three different byte values. If you just use integers without a prefix, you can use between 0 and 255 in base 10. If you use the 0b prefix, you're working with a binary literal. For a byte, you can have up to eight ones. We like to break up every four bits with underscores, though it's not necessary. It does help to visualize the way that four binary digits and one hexadecimal digit match up, though. Unfortunately, that's not what we're learning about right now, but if you do know how to work in hexadecimal, like many other languages, Swift uses the 0x prefix for hex literals. These bytes could represent any data and we'll find out what I was imagining in the next video, but it's perfectly fine to think of them as just 8-bit numbers for now. Let's finally save something. First, create a new instance of data. I'll call it mystery data. Helpfully, there is an initializer that's ready for my array of bytes. And data has a write method that takes a URL. And as you see, writing will throw an error if it doesn't succeed, so you need a try beforehand. You'll notice from here on out that we'll be using try outside of a do block sometimes. That works because a playground acts like a do block from which you don't need to catch. If there ever is an error, execution will stop and you won't see anything past that point in the results sidebar. So we know this write succeeded for two reasons. One, you see other readouts in the sidebar down below, and two, we can go to the mystery data URL, and there we see that we've got a mysterious file written to our document directory. Let's read it back. All right. To do that, data has an initializer that works with the contents of a URL. I'll store the data as saved mystery data. If there's no data at the URL you specify, attempting to read would throw an error, so you need a try here as well. That error could happen if your URL represented a directory, for example, instead of a file. To get our numbers back, we can just use the array initializer that accepts a data instance. It looks right. Let me have Swift verify that the saved mystery bytes are equal to the original mystery bytes above. They are. You can also just equate two datas. 